Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and in my last video, I looked at the pros and cons of streaming on YouTube instead of using Zoom to teach classes online. One of the major takeaways from that video was that while it's very easy to stream content directly from a webcam on YouTube, it's a little more complicated if you want to show content from your computer's screen, like PowerPoint slides or a video game. To do that, you need to use third-party streaming software, which is more complicated to set up than simply using the built-in share screen button in Zoom. So in this video, I wanted to provide a brief introduction to streaming to YouTube using OBS Studio. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. This is a free and very popular streaming software that many people use to stream to YouTube. Now, there are plenty of tutorials about this on YouTube from people who know way more about the software than I do and go into a lot of detail. So I want to target this tutorial at people who are coming from Zoom and just need to know the basics. Now, as I showed in my previous video, if you want to start live streaming from YouTube, you do that by going up here to the right, click on Create, click Go Live, and that will bring you to a screen that gives you a couple different options to stream content from your computer or to stream directly from a webcam, which is what I showed in the previous video. Now, this interface for streaming from your computer is way more complicated than you what, me, what you might be used to if you're coming from Zoom, where you just have a Share Screen button and there's not all these other settings, there's no stream key, servers, all of that stuff. So th this interface can kind of look confusing and overwhelming at first, but it's not that difficult to set up if you follow a few steps that are included with the Open Broadcaster software introductory tutorial. So to get started, you're going to need to go to obsproject.com, go to the download page and download the software for your operating system. Download and install that, and once you've done that, it should prompt you to go to their Quick Start Guide, which is going to run you through the simple steps you need to get up and running without going into all the details that only more advanced users are going to care about. So here I'm looking at the OBS Studio window. I have already set this up, but if you ever need to do the Quick Start Guide again, you can always get to it by going up to Tools and select Auto Configuration Wizard, so I'll walk you through that from the beginning. So click on that. And first, you're going to need to tell it whether you want to optimize for streaming or optimize for just recording. So if you're going to be live streaming, you want that first option there. If you want to use this as a screen recorder for videos you'll post later, then you would want that second option. I'm going to go with the live streaming option, leave that first one selected, and click Next. It's then going to ask you to select the resolution and frame rate. You can just leave these as the defaults. You don't probably don't need to worry about this too much. Hit next again. Now this is important, you need to select which service you're going to stream to. So I'm talking about YouTube here, but there are other things like Twitch, Facebook, etc. So for, I'm going to select the main YouTube option here. I'm not really sure what that beta one is. And then this is important, you need a stream key. So this is what is going to link the OBS software to your YouTube channel to allow it to send the stream. So you get that by going back to YouTube and go into your YouTube streaming page and you see there's a stream key here and it has this blocked out because you want to treat this like a password. This isn't something you should share with other people or I believe it would allow them to stream video to your channel. So you can't see mine here. It does have the little eye icon you can click on if you want to show it, but you would copy that from YouTube, go back to OBS Studio and then you're going to paste that in here in the stream key field. Finally, you're going to hit next it's going to tell you it's going to do a bandwidth test. So you will want to go back into YouTube and make sure you have your stream set to either unlisted or private. If you have this set to public, then it's just gonna basically be streaming gibberish to your channel that other people would see. So make sure you have this set to unlisted or private before you start your test. Go back in here and hit yes. And it's just basically streaming this noisy signal because it's testing the bandwidth of your connection and optimizing the settings for your stream. So this is all behind the scenes stuff that you don't care about. And again, new users wouldn't really know what to do to adjust these settings manually. So when that is done, it will give you this screen with a bunch of settings and you don't have to worry if you don't understand what any of this means about bitrate and encoders and stuff. This is why you're just kind of trusting the auto, -configurated, auto configuration wizard hit apply settings, and then you will be ready to start streaming, but you'll notice that we are just looking at a blank screen right now. So as with Zoom, you need to make sure you have the correct audio and video source selected for what you want to show. So for the audio, you can go down here to settings, click the audio option in settings, 
and then you're going to want to select your primary microphone from the drop down here it will default to whatever your system default is but if you have multiple microphones you might want to select which one you're using you'll see there are a bunch of advanced options here for people doing streaming with multiple cameras and microphones again for your typical online class you're teaching from home you're probably not going to be too worried about that hit apply and then you also need to add video sources so you see down here under sources it says you don't have any sources, click the plus button below or right click here to add one. So again, there are a lot of different options here. The main ones you're probably going to want to use if you want to reproduce what you would do in Zoom are a video capture device, which would be your webcam or a display capture, which is going to show what's on your monitor. So I'm going to add the monitor first. I'm going to select display capture, click okay. And, well, I get this sort of crazy inception thing where it's showing this tunnel of everything on my primary monitor here. So you can see I am actually recording this on a machine with two monitors. I could select either monitor. So if I move to the other one, then that's where I had this web browser option but open. But I'm going to go back to this display here. Hit OK. And, and now I'm getting this crazy inception thing. So we'll talk a little bit more about how to get rid of that in a minute. But let's say I also wanted to add a camera view of myself. So I'm going to click plus, go to video capture device, hit OK, and I'm going to select my webcam. So again, I can, there's a whole bunch of different settings here that you probably don't care about. The only one I'm going to change is going to a custom resolution and make this widescreen. So it defaulted to kind of that more square aspect ratio there. I'm going to go to 1280 by 720, and that gives me this widescreen view. So once I've done that, you'll see I can click and drag to resize this camera window and put it anywhere I want. That's something you can't do very easily in Zoom and something people complain about. The view options are kind of limited in terms of where the person's face is when they are sharing their screen. And if I want to start streaming to YouTube, I have already entered my streaming key, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the Start Streaming button. Now, it might not be immediately obvious what people on YouTube are seeing. You don't want them seeing... OBS Studio, you want them to see your PowerPoint or game or whatever it is. So I am going to minimize this. And now I have a blank desktop here. And I'm going to switch over to recording what you would see in the YouTube stream interface. So to make this easier for you to see, I'm going to record both the monitors on my desktop at once. So over here on the left, I have the monitor where I previously had OBS Studio open. And now I've minimized that. And over here on the right, I have my YouTube streaming interface. So you can see in this little preview window here what your YouTube viewers would actually see. So you'll notice that the big difference here is that they are going to see that camera view of me talking based on where I had placed it in OBS Studio, but I do not see that once I've minimized OBS Studio. So if I want to move that, I need to open OBS Studio up again and say I'm going to drag this up here to the top left. And you'll see there is a slight delay before that happens on YouTube. We'll give it a few seconds. So see, the YouTube viewers would see this weird infinity thing. And now I've dragged that up to the top left. If I minimize this again, then it will go back to my desktop and they'll just see my camera view up here. But again, you don't see the camera view of yourself on the desktop you're sharing. So now that you have that set up, if you wanted to share, for example, a PowerPoint, I open my PowerPoint here and start a new presentation. Again, there's a couple second lag, but there is no live real-time two-way audio or video communication, so it's fine if your viewers are seeing things on a couple second delay because they don't need to talk back to you. And you'll see now your viewers would see your camera view and your PowerPoint in the stream. So for somebody coming from Zoom, that seems like a lot more hoops to jump through to simply share content from your screen. In Zoom, that is literally just a couple buttons to click. You hit share screen. You select your PowerPoint or whatever you want to share, and you hit share, and that's it. So there's no third-party software, there's no streaming key, there's no, none of that. But there could be some reasons, depending on your situation, where streaming on YouTube is worth it over Zoom, particularly if you are running into limits on Zoom's cloud storage or the number of people in a meeting or the meeting time length. YouTube doesn't really have any of those limits. So it can be much better... So, sorry, my four-year-old decided to join me in our office because I'm working from home during the pandemic, like many of you, so if you hear background noise for the remainder of this recording, that's why. Anyway, point being, YouTube doesn't have those limitations on length, number of participants, or number of videos you can upload. 
like Zoom does. So it might be worth it in certain scenarios, even though there are more hoops to jump through to set up the streaming. And again, I covered those different pros and cons in the previous video in this playlist. So as always, I hope you found this video helpful. Four year old in the background. And if you have questions, comments, or a suggestion for another tutorial, please go ahead and leave a comment below the video. Thank you.